This is a laboratory water flume. It's big, expensive, and takes up a lot of room. But I've always wanted one of my own. So I built a small version of one of these flumes in my office at home. And then when I realised all the parts of the design I'd got wrong, I redesigned and modified it to get it as close to the real thing as possible. And this video is the story of how I did it. I teach water engineering at a university and a large part of my job involves teaching in a hydraulic slab that looks a bit like this. Hydraulic slabs are an essential part of the learning process for water engineers, because it doesn't matter how good you are at solving Bernoulli's equation. Things only really start to make sense when you get to press some big green buttons, turn some big red valves, and get some water moving. But then when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, the resulting series of national lockdowns meant we had to shut our labs for the best part of the next 18 months. Cue slightly underwhelming reenactment of this moment. So overnight my teaching space went from this, to this. And as lecturers we lost the ability to do any practical teaching or so I thought at the time. But then I started wondering if I could build my own flume at home to add some practical elements to my lockdown teaching. I must say this was partly inspired by the amazing work done by Grady at Practical Engineering, so I've put a link to his channel in the description. I've spent the majority of my career working with flumes of all shapes and sizes, and although there are some very technical aspects to many lab setups, Ultimately, almost all lab flumes are just a plastic or glass box with water being pumped down them from a tank. So I designed a plastic box of my own that would fit in my office at home, ordered some pre-cut acrylic sheets, and then solvent welded them together. In the end I was pretty happy with how it ended up. It's not perfectly square, but it's pretty close to being square, and a lot better than I thought I would manage when I started the build. I designed the flume to sit on top of this homemade bookcase in my office at home, which I had to modify to allow water to flow through it. So I now have my plastic box. I then used this storage container as a sump, and this cheap aquarium pump to send water down the channel. Once the water gets to the end of the channel, it's caught by this bucket with a hole drilled in the bottom. and an old soup can super glued to the hole to stop splashes. I've had a few comments on my videos about the magic blue water. To get the water this blue, you can either source it from high altitude alpine lakes, or if you don't have one of those to hand, you can cheat. So the system is kind of working now, and we are recirculating water, but what you discover when you pump water down a four-sided box is what you get is a big jet of water inside a four-sided box, which was quite a long way off the look I was going for. So I needed to add some gates to control the flow. 
So I welded on these slots made out of 10mm extruded acrylic, which would allow me to add control gates at the inlet and the outlet. I then added a sluice gate at the inlet to stabilise the flow. The basic idea of this sluice gate is that rather than the water just being pumped straight down the flume in a big jet, the gate forces it to pull, which smooths out the flow as it enters the flume. That's the idea anyway, although mine didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped at low flow depths, but we'll come back to that in a bit. The slots at the outlet can then be used to add a weir to set the flow depth. I lost more than a week of my life playing with designs to get a variable height weir in these slots, but in the end the simplest and overwhelmingly most effective solution was just to use more 10mm extruded acrylic, cut to the width of the channel. I could then just build them up in the slots to build a simple, height adjustable weir. This allowed me to set the flow depth in 10mm steps and was a stupidly simple solution that worked almost perfectly. I now had a setup that was working pretty nicely and I used the flume for the majority of my online teaching throughout the lockdowns. It turned out to be really quite powerful and I was able to demonstrate a whole range of hydraulic principles using it. Although I was pretty happy with how the first attempt at my flume turned out, there's also some parts that didn't quite work as well as I'd hoped. So let's make a list of things that could be improved and then spend the rest of the video making them happen. The first problem with the setup is the flow rate's not high enough. I'm using this cheap aquarium pump to send water around the system, but it's not really powerful enough, so I want to at least double the flow rate. Secondly, the flume is currently either on or off. The only control I have is the power switch that goes to the pump, so this means I can only work with one flow rate, which is pretty limiting. So I want to be able to adjust the flow rate. Next I want to improve the flume's inlet to give more stable flow. I've already installed this sluice gate to create a primitive stilling pool, but it's currently not really doing a very good job. So this needs to be completely redesigned if we want to get more stable flow going down the flume. And finally, the outlet is currently just open, discharging into a bucket with a soup can glued to it. For some setups this works fine, but for others water ends up splashing everywhere, and considering this is an office in my house with carpet on the floor, that's definitely not ideal. So I want to redesign the outlet so no water is escaping into parts of the house where it shouldn't be. Ok, so we've got our wish list for ways to improve the flume, we now just need to make it happen. So firstly, we want to double the pumping power. In an ideal world, I'd love to install a centrifugal pump, a bit like this one, but at the moment, this is a bit beyond my budget. If this video gets 100,000 views, I'll definitely install one of these and make a video about it, but for now, the easiest way to double the pumping power of a cheap plastic pump is to use two cheap plastic pumps. But I don't really want to run two separate pipes from these pumps to the flume, so I designed a Y junction to link the pumps together. You can get these parts very cheaply off the shelf, but I set myself the challenge in this build of designing and making as many parts as I could myself from scratch. So far I've only really been using hand tools, but the components we'll be making for these modifications are a bit more involved, so I'll be 3D printing parts that I can't easily make by hand. This is the final part, so let's see if it works. Ok, so now we've doubled the flow rate. I'm going to address the next two items on the list together by completely redesigning the flume's inlet. The idea of the current stilling basin is that as water enters the inlet, it's forced by the sluice gate to pull, which stabilises before it flows down the flume. The challenge is the jet is relatively big inside the stilling pool, so it just bounces around and ends up going straight down the flume. 
So what I want to make is a system that forces the water to pump straight up into the stilling pool. So we have no initial component of velocity in the primary direction of the flow. What I really want in this stilling pool is for water to only be falling down the flume by gravity alone and not being pumped down the flume. One of the problems is that the jet entering the stilling basin is just too powerful. So I'm going to design the inlet to break up the jet at this point with a diffuser. Also, a problem with the sluice gate design is that water can only leave at the base, which also magnifies the jet effect. So we'll replace the sluice gate with a series of flow straighteners to allow water to leave the stilling pool more uniformly and also to add a bit of extra stabilisation to the flow. The final step of our new inlet is to add a valve on the main feed pipe so we can adjust the flow rate to any flow rate we like. So let's make this happen. So this is the new inlet. The idea is that the water goes in this pipe here, it hits the base of the tank and then is forced upwards through this diffuser where it will hopefully form a nice still pool and then it will fall down the flume under gravity. This is a fairly high risk strategy because this diffuser is pointing straight up so we have no velocity component going straight down the flume which is what we want but the risk is if the discharge is too high then we could get water coming over the top of this tank. And the reason it's a particularly high risk strategy is because this is my desk here. So this is where I'm doing my, my day job. So any leaks over the top of this could be a bit of a disaster but we'll see how it goes. So everything's now in place, let's see if it works. Ok, so there's a few issues with this test run. Firstly, it looks like there's something wrong with the adapter I designed to join the feed pipe to the valve, as water is currently spraying all over my office. It also looks like there's quite a bit of water coming out the base of the diffuser rather than being pushed through the holes, so this will also need some attention. I started to redesign the adapter between the main pipe and the valve, but as I began to think about it, I realised that the design was actually fine and I'd actually just been really stupid. I wanted to begin the test with the valve shut and slowly open it as I had no idea how fast water was going to come out of the inlet and the inlet is pointing straight up. So I wanted to slowly open the valve and let the flow slowly build up. But if you think about it, the pump is submerged in water and the valve is shut. So what we have is a big tube of air trapped in this pipe. When we turn the pump on, we're just pushing against this tube of air which has nowhere to go. 
until eventually it has sufficient pressure to break the adapter seal. And once the seal is broken, air will flow through the breech and then water will quickly follow it. So I don't need to redesign anything, all I need to do is reassemble and reseal the whole thing and then turn it on with the valve very slightly open to stop the build up of pressure. I've been studying water engineering in one form or another for more than 15 years now, so I really shouldn't have made this stupid mistake. But if you ever do a project like this, what you find is that designing and building anything new from scratch is basically just a long process of overcoming your own stupid mistakes. The other issue is that water is leaking out of the inlet at the base, so this needs a bit of a modification. I was considering redesigning the whole inlet, but this is nothing a bit of high viscosity superglue can't fix. So I've made some modifications to the inlet after the test run. The first thing I've done is super glue in the adapter, so that's going absolutely nowhere now. The main problem with the test run is that almost all of the water was coming out the base of this inlet rather than going through the flow straighteners as I wanted it to. That was partly because for the test run I was just holding this in place, whereas in reality I was going to silicon it in. But there was just so much water coming through the base of it, even with me pushing down quite hard on this, I'm just not convinced that the silicon seal is going to be able to withstand the pressure of the water trying to push its way out. So what I've done is I've built this base plate and just super glued that in place now. So hopefully if the super glue holds that will mean that there's absolutely nowhere for the water to go apart from to be pushed through the flow straighteners and that should give us nice stable flow. So all that's left to do now is to just silicon this into the rig. So now we have an inlet where we can control the flow rate. And we have relatively stable flow entering the flume. But to make sure, we can inject some dye at the inlet to make sure we don't have any massive jets or preferential flow paths. Looks reasonable. And finally, we want to redesign the outlet of the flume so we don't have water splashing everywhere. For this, I designed a guard that would hopefully catch all of the excess splashes. So this is now working pretty nicely. In the end I was pretty happy with how the flume turned out and if you want to see any of the teaching content that I made using the flume, most of those videos are now live on the channel. But now I've got a more powerful second generation flume, I've got lots of interesting project ideas that I'm hoping to work on over the next few months. So if you want to see more videos like this, keep an eye on the channel.